Ho, ho, ho! Mercy Christmas, everybody. I'm joined not by Donner or Dancer or Prancer. It is Roller. Little Rolly. And okay, you don't have to wear that anymore. Anyone who has a dog knows how much they love being dressed up. But uh, back with another gift box unboxing. I've had this one for a while. I'm going to let you go. You go make trouble, okay? Go make trouble. I've had this one for a while. It's from Good Brother Micah. Micah, thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to go through it right now and show it off. I've already gone through it. Um, but I want to show all of you all of the amazing uh, Christmas goodies that Micah has sent along that you'll be seeing on the channel in the coming months, coming years maybe. And we're going to start off with some G.I. Joe Classified. Got the Cobra Commander now. One of the few that I was missing from Classified. So we've got old Snake Face who comes with. It still looks like a fish, even in person. And then we've also got, ooh, I think this guy is rare. This is a uh, red ninja right here. Man, comes with um, weapons that look familiar to me. They actually kind of look like the weapons, uh, some of the weapons that were in the Snake Eyes exclusive pack. Uh, the big box set from HasLab. So that's going to be really cool to go through too. And the old Gyrene Gung Ho. And he is hefty. He seems quite a bit heftier and thicker than all of the other classified figures. So he's got a little extra gumbo on his bones. He looks fantastic. Um, there is an upgrade set for him on Big Bad Toy Store in the blue. The, uh, the original... Uh, costume that he wore in Real American Hero, but now that I'm seeing this guy in person, I actually don't mind the uh, the green, the OD green on him. I mean, green works on a Marine, right? So I might still pick up that upgrade set just to see what he looks like, but uh, so cool to have Gung Ho in six inch. Oh, and I love the giant backpack because the original figure came with a giant backpack too. And we've also got one more classified figure. Oh man, another one of these really beautiful box sets. It's the special edition Cobra Commander. And the top slides off. Reminds me a lot of Club Grayskull figures from uh, Maddie Collector. Really nice box here that, uh, how does this open up? I do not, okay, opens up on the other side. Oh, the presentation is so awesome. Okay, I guess it opens up like that, revealing the figure within. I kind of, um, when I open up a box like this with a Cobra Commander in it, it kind of brings back bad memories, like, is he about to get hit with the spores? <laughs> but this is a really, really beautiful box. Uh, special recolor of Cobra Commander with a giant red cape. Well, red on the outside, it looks like. Uh, black, black on the outside, red on the inside. Uh, black and red color scheme. Beautiful accessories. This is another mix and match one, I think, that you could take some elements from this one and put it on the regular release and do yourself uh, an ultimate version, kind of like how some people are taking the retail version of Snake Eyes and mixing and matching with the HasLab exclusive version. Comes with the original Cobra Commander gun in gold. So cool to see that original gun upscaled. Beautiful sword, nice serpent scepter. Uh, a globe, a little globe to hold in his hand. That's really nice. I think that's one that remains in box, just kind of, you crack it open like this. This is a really cool idea for packaging, actually, because um, for people who just like having that knowledge of it's in there, then you can keep it all sealed in box with the slip cover on it. But um, you can also crack it open like this. He's still technically in the box, but he's also on display, too. That's super cool. And then... There is, oh man, this is, this is amazing. These guys are killing it. Um, 
This is a NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles two-pack box set from the movie. Love this movie. We definitely need to do a commentary on this movie. Um, this is one of the best live-action movie adaptions of a cartoon or comic or toy line ever. It's the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. And this is a two-pack of Raphael in his disguise. Who could possibly recognize him? Uh, along with Casey Jones. And this guy is my definitive Casey Jones. It's Elias Coteus. I believe that's how it's pronounced. And um, he comes with a whole bunch of accessories. Comes with, uh, and, and they're just beautifully detailed. It's that um, Nika level of detail. There's a hockey sticks and uh, baseball bats, a slice of pizza for uh, Raphael. Raphael comes with, looks like a couple of different hands and headband attachments, the uh, hat so that no one can recognize them. Really looking forward to cracking that one open. Thank you so much for that one, Micah. Um, yeah, Casey Jones is one of my favorite Turtles characters. And to finally have an actual figure from the movie version of Casey Jones is so awesome. Any Casey Jones I have, I have him because of this, um, this character in this movie. So the original Turtles Casey Jones, he was pretty cool in the cartoon, but when I look at him, I think of Elias. And same goes for the uh, 2000s uh, Casey Jones. Same thing, but uh, Gungala, this guy is absolutely awesome. And then we've got a couple of Masters of the Universe items. I haven't seen these show, show up in my area yet. Um, it's wave two of the Eternia Minis, which come in the uh, Snake Mountain packaging. So just a heads up to anyone using the, the letter codes to figure out who you're getting. They change the letter codes on wave two. Uh, they're totally different than uh, wave one. So you'll have to look up the codes for the Snake Mountain wave. And inside we've got the most powerful man in the universe, He-Man trying to escape Snake Mountain. It's not going to be as easy as the first time around He-Man. Uh, the first Snake Mountain was very easy to uh, es escape with the shackles being so fragile as they were, but this one is, is pretty ironclad. Awesome to have a little Snake Mountain. And I haven't seen any of these in my area either. Uh, world's smallest Masters of the Universe toys. So here is the world's smallest He-Man. It is so cool. I've seen videos and pictures of the G.I. Joe versions of these. Also haven't seen G.I. Joe, world's smallest in my area. Uh, but the detail on this is incredible. It is so tiny. I mean, there's, there's my thumb in relation to how big this He-Man is. And, um, I've been using the Mega Constructs He-Man figures uh, for like my uh, Castle Grayskull um, statue, which was made by Icon Heroes. And he looks really cool in front of it, but I think this would look even better. Uh, make the castle look even more gigantic by having this teeny tiny guy. And it looks like even his harness is actually removable. So to have a figure that tiny, but also have a removable accessory, that is really impressive. Looks like he's got uh, like a sword in the back too. And behind him probably a shield. Yeah, it does have a shield. A couple of other world's smallest figures as well. <laughs> you gotta have Battle Cat with He-Man. Oh man, any fans of world's smallest Transformers from years back? I think you're gonna love these. And here's a close up to try to show off some more detail. But the fact that it's this bigger outer packaging with a little tiny miniature box on the inside is just a bonus and really adds to the presentation of this teeny tiny toy. So there's Battle Cat and also included in the gift box is the tiniest master of evil in the universe, Skeletor, who includes his Havoc staff. I like that there's even a graphic on the back here of the four figures that are available. And then we've also got Tila, the warrior goddess, complete with her staff and her snake headdress. And the uh, character art on the packaging is the filmation art. 
So happy that Mattel's gotten all the rights to the Filmation animated shows and the Filmation artwork because I think the Filmation artwork is just as iconic as those early box art renditions by the legendary Rudy Abrero. So thanks again, Micah, so much. This is so awesome. Hope you and your family have a wonderful Christmas and a very happy and safe and prosperous 2021. And I hope all of you out there also have a very Merry Christmas or a Happy Hanukkah or a festive Festivus or whatever religion or spirituality or event or belief that you celebrate. I hope that it's a happy and a merry one and that you get to enjoy some holiday cheer and uh, looking forward to 2021. Uh, 2020 has not been all bad. I know that it has been filled with lots of challenges, but let's all remember that a pessimist looks for the challenge in every opportunity and an optimist looks for the opportunity in every challenge. So uh, I've really reveled uh, looking in the opportunities in 2020 and I'm also looking forward to the opportunities in 2021 and I hope all of you out there have many many opportunities come your way and I hope that you're able to take advantage of them and, uh, and use those opportunities for great success and health and happiness in 2021. Thanks again everybody. Stay safe out there. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Third mistake.